All right. Welcome to today's class all about the disk profile. Um, for those of you that know me, I've been using this profile for the last, I don't know, five or six years now. It's one of the first things that I learned when I got into the game. Um, and it really can set you apart in situations in which you start to feel a little bit uncomfortable. You're, you're talking on the other side of the table with somebody that you don't relate to, um, things of that nature. Really, we're, we're going to go into exactly why and how people act the way they act in the different areas and personalities that they have. But, but first, let's intro with the DISC profile. We need to set some ground rules um, because I've, I've done this class before. I've taken a plenty of DISC classes before. And sometimes when the instructor is talking, um, sometimes I, I got offended. Um, I got offended because obviously we are all going to be part of this circle. We all have a personality and we're all going to fit into something in this DISC profile class. Um, when I say I got offended, it was because what we're going to talk about today is the extreme sides, the extreme sides of each one of these personality traits. So the DISC profile is an acronym. Um, you have a D, I, S, and C. And what those different profiles mean is you're going to naturally have a, uh, what they call kind of a natural state of being. You're, you're going to be, um, how do I put this? Everybody has two of these letters. Every single one of us has at least two of these letters. Sometimes when you take the disk profile test, it's only going to pop up with one letter. Um, sometimes when you take the disk profile test, it'll pop up with two or three. I've never seen it pop up with four. Um, however, just know that the test is only about 15, 20 minutes. It's really easy. So no matter what you come up with, if you only get one letter, go through the research report for it and understand who you might be, what your secondary might be. So the test that I'm talking about, I'm gonna put it in the chat box. You just go to tonyrobbins.com slash disc or go to Google and type Tony Robbins disc and it'll come up. It's a free assessment, don't pay for it. Um, there's no need to pay for it unless you really, really want, really want to get into it. Um, or just give me a call, ask me questions. I love this thing. And it really helped me to figure out one, who I was and two, um, how to relate to other people. I'm telling you, the best thing I learned was how to relate to the opposite personality. So for those of you that know me, I am on any given day, I'm a chameleon. I do have a different type of uh, personality. Um, I don't see too many people that are a DS or SD. So if you guys ever if you guys ever talk to me and I'm in a very um, cutthroat mode or very um, type A personality, very bullet point, no emotions, most likely my high D is coming out. If I'm teaching a class like I am right now, right now I'm trying to slow my breathing down. I'm trying to make sure that nothing else is going on in my head. There's no other deadlines or, or things going on in my email. My phone's turned over. I don't want any distractions because I need to put myself in a high S mode. Um, so on any given day, I will tend to be a high S or a high D today. I just woke up feeling like I'm in a high D mode or type A. And so we're going to get through these and we're going to understand them, but because I'm a DS and an SD, I had to understand how to interact with someone who's a high I or a high C. I used to not be able to, um, I used to not like a high C. I used to not like a high I. And what I realized was it's just because I couldn't relate to them. I didn't understand why they said some of the things they say. And now that I understand who the high I's are in the room, who the high C's are, um, I can relate to them. And typically speaking, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a different creature, um, most high C's will have a, there'll be a CD or a CS. Most high I's will be a high I-S or a high D. So the other type of odd personality, if you will, or I should say the rarity would be an I-S or a, I'm sorry, an I-C or a C-I. Anybody in here a C-I or I-S or I'm sorry, a C-I I'm or I-C? -I. Okay, so you have one of those different, per, one of those different um, personalities too. Going across that scale, going across that spectrum is a little different, Bert. 
you and I have some things that we, that we have some great positive attributes for, for going across that circle like that, but we also have some limitations and some things to understand too. And one of the graphics I'll show you kind of will help you understand that, or maybe that's why we get along so well. So we're gonna go through now, we're gonna go through each one at a base level overview, and we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of each. Each personality trait, a high D has plenty of pros and plenty of cons, and same with the I, C, and S, all right? But when I go through this, please don't be offended if you sound like you fit into these categories. I am talking about the extremes of things. So like I said, I'm a high D. I talk in bullet points. I am direct. I'm decisive. I absolutely do not have any trouble making a decision. I've, I've gotten over the fact that some decisions are right and some decisions are wrong. If any of you guys see in my uh, Facebook post, uh, I think last evening, it, it, it talks about decisions. One of the best things I ever decided to do was to be decisive in life. Whether right or wrong, I'm not gonna make a decision if I have no education around the, around the subject. But if I have education around the subject, I'm gonna make a decision to move myself forward. High Ds will make a decision fast, super fast. Sometimes they don't, they don't have all the details. I'll, half the time when I make the wrong decision is because I interpreted the situation the wrong way. And I should have slowed down a little bit and I should have taken some more time to analyze the situation. But through making wrong decisions, what happens when you make a wrong decision? How do you feel? What kind of emotions do you, do you have? Go ahead and throw it in the chat box. When you make a wrong decision, tell me some of the feelings that you have behind that. Embarrassed, anxiety, shame, perfect. Why do we feel those, the, 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 exactly, disdain, yes. Why do we feel those emotions when we make a wrong decision? That's what we've been trained to do. Yes, yes. See, society tells us making a wrong decision is bad. Where do we start to learn that? School, when we were kids, when our parents punished us. Right. Exactly. We most of the time see what happens is when we grow up, our parents and it's no fault. I'm a parent. I don't do this very well. I try. I try very hard uh, to be the parent that explains. But when my daughter was uh, very, very young, she made the decision to walk over to the fireplace glass and, and put her hands on it. It was an awful experience. It was it was it was absolutely brutal. And because she made that decision, she was hurt. And then mom and dad start freaking out. We start, you know, coddling her. We don't know what to do. You know, I'm pretty sure my wife was yelling, um, you know, call somebody, we got to take her somewhere. And so all of those emotions caused her to not understand what was going on. She's in pain. She feels like she did something wrong, not only because she's in pain, but because of the way her parents are acting. Now you, you keep going, you fast forward, right? You uh, get a little older, your kid goes to chase a ball out into the street. Your first instinct is to react with, with, a, with a scream, a yell, a, a stutter, uh, something to stop them in their tracks, right? Well, that feeling causes us to secrete these, these hormones and these emotions that run through our body. And so as we grow up, we, we are humans, we don't, we are very primal at our core. I know it, we get, we grow intelligent, we, we fill our brains with, with intellect, but we are very, very primal at the core. And so at a young age, our society is very, very, very um, out of touch with explaining feelings and situations and why something's going through someone's body the way it is. Because then what happens is, is when you make wrong decisions and you grow up, you're told by your teachers, that's wrong. You're told by your parents, that's wrong. Your relatives, your friends, your family members, right? But what, what, was it wrong that my daughter put her hands on the glass? Who says that that's wrong? You see, I say it's wrong because I don't want to, I don't want to have my daughter hurt. I don't want to feel her pain. I don't want to go through those things. So that's selfish. So now tell me, why is that wrong? 
her body was going to feel that pain. Her body was going to touch that and react and pull back. We naturally feel pain, so we protect ourselves. So now tell me, why was that decision wrong? It wasn't. I created the wrong, right? So when you think back to any sort of decision-making things, when you're a high D, they have an uncanny ability to get rid of the wrong, to not feel the embarrassment, afraid of rejection, those types of things, because they realize that it's their decision and it's, it's beyond anybody else to try and control that decision. So when you interact with somebody who's a very high D, very dominant, very decisive, be careful judging them for their decisiveness. I used to judge high Ds. I was not a high D. When I first got into real estate, I took this test and I was a high S. Um, I tried to read through there and figure out what my secondary type was. Um, I thought I was a high S, uh, a high SC. Um, going through it, I realized quickly I'm not a C. I have some attributes to a high C, but I'm not a high C at all. And so over the years, I developed my high D. I worked on it. Bruce did not make decisions. I was going nowhere in life. I wasn't, I wasn't choosing the right things because I wasn't choosing anything at all. I was very complacent. I didn't want to work towards anything. I had very big goals and ambitions, but I didn't do anything about it. My only way that I ended up starting to take action around my life and my business and, and anything I did was to be decisive. I went through exercises. When somebody asked me, hey, Bruce, you know, what do you feel like going out to eat? I, I, be, I decided to become decisive in very small attributes of my life. When somebody said, do you want to go out to eat? You see, I'm a high S. And we'll get into what a high S is in a little bit here. But I'm a high S. High S's do not like to make decisions. And so my friends would be like, Bruce, where do you want to go? I, I don't care, guys. What do you guys want? I, Mexican, taco, pizza, beer, wings. I don't care. Even if one of those things that I just said would have made me feel better or maybe something I wanted to eat, I wouldn't voice my opinion. And so I started going through and, and going through life doing that, right? Um, shoes. I'm, I'm horrible at buying shoes, clothes, whatever it is. I'm very indecisive. And now if it's my size and it's the color I'm looking for, I don't care. If I make the wrong decision buying a shirt that I'll never wear, maybe I'll learn from it. Maybe I won't. Why did I choose it? What did I do? At least I made the dang decision and got out of the store in 30 minutes versus three hours. And so that's what I realized what was going on in my life was I was spending so much time not making decisions that it was wasting my time. Um, so going through and being a high D, understand that those people have different ways of handling things and dealing with things. That's their pros. I do believe that being decisive, direct, and to the point is a huge pro. I save myself countless hours a week that I used to waste on a week-to-week -week basis. But what do you think some of the cons are to a high D? Anybody want to chime in? Or I'll keep going. It don't matter to me. Bullheadedness. Bullheadedness. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. When I make a decision, I'm going to stand by my decision. I'm going to be bullheaded until you show me that I need to think about it differently. Good. What else? Short and to the point, which can come off as rude. Exactly, Melissa. Um, I have to tell people I'm not trying to be rude. I have to tell people, look, I got to get off the phone. I don't mean anything by it. I just have all these other things that I've got to do or I've got to make this call. Or I've got to do this. Um, I over explain things because I'm a high SD. Um, if I was just solely a D, I wouldn't explain things. I wouldn't feel the need to. Uh, but I know that being a high D, my con is that I do not feel emotion. Okay. And when I say I don't feel emotion to all of you guys, I'm going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna to portray that I don't feel emotion. High Ds absolutely feel emotion. But guess what they're not going to do? They're not going to put it out to the public. You won't know how I'm feeling. I don't want you to. I don't need you to. It's a decision I'm making. Um, but coming off as rude, that's, that's probably one of their biggest character flaws 
is if they're in a, if I'm in a high D mode, I say some things that I know maybe an hour or two down the road, maybe the next day, I can see how I offended somebody. Didn't mean it at the time. You just got what came out of my mouth. But you can come off as rude. Now, I'm not going to go into too much of how this relates to real estate just yet. We're going to go through each one here. And then um, towards the end, we're going to go through a bunch of scenarios of how um, this has helped me in my real estate world. And um, remember the high D. I believe that those people are some of the easiest people to work with if you can understand their personality. A high I, high I. So I'm not a high I. I know a couple people in here are high I, but I also, there's plenty of people I haven't received their disc profiles back. So if you're any of these people as we go, go ahead and type it into the chat. So anybody, anybody feel like just based upon what we just said there, it might be a, a high D. Cool. A high I. A high I is, is somebody who, you know, when I think high I, I don't know why, but I took a disc profile class and this one just stuck to me. A high I, they do not mind being the class clown. I don't know why I define a high I as class clown, but let's break that down a little bit. A high I is somebody who loves the attention. They love the feeling of the excitement of a challenge. They love, I mean, do not challenge a high I. They're not going to back down. If you tell a high I to go do X, Y, and Z in the middle of class, they're going to go do it, right? So a high I, when I say class clown, it's not that they have to be that at their natural state, meaning they're just always boisterous and always, you know, mischievous. It's that in certain situations, they know how to have a good time. High eyes will talk and talk and talk about anything under the sun. They like to be challenged. Sherry, this is me. <laughs> exactly. No, yeah, Sherry's definitely a high eye and Carlson's a high eye. Um, I actually think Chad ended up being a high eye, but he's an IC and we'll, we'll talk about what that means. Um, Chad's a different type of high eye. Uh, you put into different situations and his high eye will come out, but for most of his situations, his high C will come out. Who else is on here? Kama is absolutely a high eye. Most, most people that work with me, they have to be the opposite of me. I, a high S will never be able to work with me because we won't be able to make decisions. A high D can't work with me because I don't need anybody more dominant than me. Um, Kama is an extremely high I. Sherry, why do you say you're a high I? Uh, <laughs> um, I would say just because I uh, expect results immediately and I have no patience and um, I'm super interesting, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I just, I guess my patience level more than anything and the fact that I want to get it done immediately. Do you believe that one of your biggest frustrations with your personality, and I'm just taking a stab at it. Yeah. Actually, I kind of I kind of know it. I'm but sure you do. <laughs> one of your biggest frustrations, I'm sure, with your personality is that you are impulsive and you want to you want to just get things done and get it done and get it out of the way. Yeah. But sometimes you're not willing to go through and do the research or find out the details to actually make that decision. I could see that. Yeah. That's, that's one of the biggest things with a high eye is they wear the emotions on their sleeve, right? For good or for bad. Um, most of the high eyes in the room, if you wake up in a bad mood, it's hours before you can put yourself into a good mood. And it may even be the next day after another long night's sleep, right? Um, high eyes get irritated very, very, very fast. Real fast. On, Real on fast. a switch, Yeah. on a switch. I have to be very careful when I interact with the high eye. I'm not sure where big Jimmy's at, but Jimmy was uh, my first my first assistant in the entire world. And he's also a high eye. I only really like to go after a high eye. And one of the things through going through the, the trials and errors with Jimmy being my first assistant was that I, I did not 
I, I, I probably offended that guy more, more than anybody in here ever would know. And I had no idea I was offending him. I had no idea that things I was saying were so irritating to him that he couldn't, he couldn't say anything to me because he was my employee. I really wish he would have just told me. But um, they get irritated really, really fast. You can say the wrong thing and their impulse is, oh, I hate you right now. They might not hate you forever, but I hate you right now. And I'm not getting over this. No matter what you say, I'm not listening to you. And I'm going to go stick my lip out and pout in a corner for the next couple of hours. And the only way that I'm going to get out of this is for you to get me out of this. I'm not going to get out of this myself. I'm going to let outside influences get me out of this. Um, so a high eye, life of the party. They're very boisterous. They're very outgoing. Um, now, one of the, the anomalies, as, as, as you guys know um, and get to know the disc profile a little bit further in depth, um, each one of these personalities you got to think about the introvert and extrovert. So when I talk about a high I, everybody in, in their mind goes straight to, well, a high I must be an extrovert. They can't be an introvert. You actually very much can be an introverted high I, right? Just because you don't go to a networking event and, and walk up to somebody and start talking to them doesn't mean you're not a high I. What it means is, is if you're an introvert, you're probably going to go into a group and then when that group goes up to somebody at a networking event and starts talking to somebody, if you find somebody else on the opposite side that you don't know that starts to talk about hobbies and activities that you like, all of a sudden that introvert will start talking for hours, right? So one of the things that a high eye does, so we talked about, let's talk about their pros. Their pros are that they can talk, They're, they can hold a conversation, right? Every time I'm on the phone with Sherry, I have to look at my watch. I have to make sure that I'm not running over time or, or going into another conversation or getting off the phone or whatnot, right? It's not her fault. I just know I got to do that because I like talking to Sherry because she's very exuberant. She's very bubbly. She's very much after, you know, the conversation and wants to set up the, the she wants to set up the, the situation, right? One of Sherry's favorite situate or one of Sherry's favorite lines is, okay, so here's the situation. She says that all the time. Is that true? 100%. <laughs> yeah. High eyes like to talk about the entire thing, right? Before Sherry gets her question out, she's got to set up that entire situation, that entire parameter. So that's why they're able to talk to people. It's because they want to, they're storytellers. They want you to know the, from like why they're asking the question um, and to how they got to asking that question, right? And so uh, I almost went into real estate. We'll talk about how a high eye interacts in real estate. But that's one of their most positive traits is Sherry can talk to anybody. She might feel clammy. She might feel nervous. You know, how was your first time door knocking? Oh, my God. It was rough. High eyes get over door knocking faster than anybody else. How do you feel now about door knocking? It doesn't bother me in the least. Yeah, it's so crazy to me how much you high eyes can get over things fast. But the only way you're ever going to get over it is if you can find those days where you can convince yourself to go do it. So that's one of the cons. So we'll go into some cons around a high eye. A high eye is impulsive, and they usually stick by their, their, imp, their, their whatever you want to call it, their impulsivity. Now, let's not confuse impulsive with decisive. Decisive means a decision around something that you have knowledge around. Impulsive means you're going to choose something at a moment's notice, whether or not you're thinking about the big picture. It's so funny to me that a high eye needs to paint the entire picture to somebody else. But when they don't have the entire picture, they're just super impulsive. It's very unique to me how a high eye interacts, but then thinks at the same time. And so a high eye, because they're impulsive, they're likely to do things without knowing the entire subject, without knowing the entire thing, right? High eyes are the biggest culprits of not going three questions deep in buyer consultations, seller consultations, right? When Sherry, and I, I'm just picking on you, Sherry, and I know you don't care, um, yeah, but just <laughs> <laughs> it's because 
when I say, hey, don't get offended in this class because um, I'm going to talk about the extremes, you're, you're a pretty extreme high eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm up there. I'm really yep. up there. Ask me a husband. <laughs> yep. So when, um, so one of your, one of your, one of your character flaws or your, or your cons is that you're going to be impulsive. When you get a lead, you're going to be very excited. And that's going to cause you to not ask the right questions. That's going to cause you not to go deep. That's going to cause you not to understand the entire situation. And high eyes are notorious for creating the situation in their head. If you don't get all the details, you're going to just create details, right? Yep. Well, they said that they said they were in a lease. So there must be, you know, you're just going to create like, well, they must be, they must be without actually asking, right? A high eye typically um, will create all these scenarios in their head. They start to get all clammy. They'll start to get all excited. And that's why a high eye gets let down so much. That's why a high eye ebbs and flows through their emotions. It's because they get them, their selves excited in situations that they shouldn't be excited. They get themselves in a sad note or a downward angle or a bad mood because they created it in their head because they didn't have all the details. A high eye, well, their biggest con is that they put their blinders on. A high eye has a very hard time to take the blinders off and understand that there's four or five different directions. To them, there's only one direction. And they've got to barrel through that direction, whether or not they like it. Questions about a high eye. Anybody else in here a high eye? Bert, you have those? Yeah, you, you do. You struggle with going deep into the, the questions and motivation and scripts. Are you a high eye? Have you taken the test? I'm a CI. Okay. Oh, yeah, you said that. I'm sorry. See, mm -hmm. I don't even, I don't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, exactly. And, you know, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I like being corrected. Um, Sherry is the epitome of an um, extrovert high eye. And um, Zach, I think, is a little bit introverted high eye. Is that correct? Would you say that? Yep, I think that's fair. Zach? Yep. Why do you think I can pick that up with you guys? What is the difference between you guys? You guys are both high eyes. I don't know. Be impulsive. Yes. Say something. You've studied this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because what? Uh, you've studied this, I'm guessing. No, I know, no, no. I, I, I know I can pick you out. I'm saying, what makes you the introverted or extroverted high eye? Because I, I do get super excited about new ideas and I do tend to just want to run with them without doing a lot of due diligence. I mean, you and I had a conversation about that just yesterday. I heard about something. I love the sales pitch. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. You do the research for me. Mm -hmm. Cool. Any questions about eyes? Cool. Let's move on to the S. This is one of those personalities that in moments, I like that I'm an S. In other moments, I can't stand that I'm a high S. If I'm in super, super high S mode, I'm not decisive. I can't make decisions. Um, things take me a lot longer. So a high S, uh, they, they label it as, a, as steady. Um, I don't really understand the steadiness of a high S. Um, for me, I would say take out steady and put stability. Or I guess right there, stable. Um, so a high S, the, the, the instant thing that I think of when I think high S, so a high D, I think type A, high I, I think class clown, high S, my, 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 my mantra is they can't make decisions. They base all of their decisions upon other people's interactions, ideas, and thoughts, right? They're very indecisive. Um, now that's good and bad, right? Because they're indecisive, they're much more likely to listen. They're much more likely to show emotion, to feel, 
Uh, well, actually, we didn't talk about that with the high eye. High eyes are the most emotional creatures. They're the ones who can turn on tears in a heartbeat. And they're the ones who can wipe away those tears and be laughing and chugging a beer with you the next instant. Um, they're the most emotionally dominant creatures in this disc profile. The second is your high S's. S's, their, their feelings or emotions are, are, their emotions are more based upon feelings than anything else. The feelings of other people. If there's any high, I, high S's in the room and they hear a sob story, um, they tend to put themselves into that position and start to feel that story, right? So who's the highest S that I'm going to pick on for this little segment here? Right. Ariana's smirking. I know you're not a high S. I'm not picking on you. I'm looking for the brass ears. There she is. Erica, okay. Uh, let's pick on Erica and Melissa. Because uh, Melissa, what's your secondary trait? C. Oh, you guys are both high Cs. Are you, are you SC or, or CS? SC, I think. Okay, that makes sense. And Erica, you're a CS. Okay, perfect. Um, Caleb's absolutely an S. Kramer, what are you? She's got to be an I. Michelle Kramer? Oh, no. Kramer, uh, Michelle Kramer. She's an S. No, it's not on me. Yeah, I think I think Michelle, I think Michelle actually out of everybody I'm looking at that's on this room, I think Michelle's probably our our top runner for a chameleon. Um, in any given day and any different situation, I can see Michelle being in a high I. I definitely can see Michelle being a high D and a high S. I got a C S too, but I feel like I identify a lot more with the S. Let's talk about that. That's, that's why S is probably the longer conversation uh, because S's have a hard time making decisions. Most of the time, in order to run through life as a high S, you have to use your secondary personality to get by. And so where Tiffany just said, you know, she's a CS, but she feels like she identifies a lot more with the S. Um, it, it's probably true when you, what happened, I'm, I'm going to guess when you took the disc profile, Tiffany, um, you probably put yourself in a mindset. You probably put yourself into this gear of, okay, I need to take this. I'm taking a test. I need to do this diligently. And so since you ha naturally have a high C part of you, you read all of the words and all of the questions. You read all of the responses, right? A high C will read all of the A, B, C, and D. A high I will take a multiple choice question, read the question, and their first answer, A, B, C, or D, that they find that they feel like relates to that question, that's their choice. I'm here just now. Yeah, I think Michelle is definitely a chameleon. Um, but that might be why, Tiffany, a high S has to use their secondary personality to get through in life. Otherwise, that's they don't totally understand. true. I, yeah, because I read through every single thing and I like read through all of the like extra words that I put on all of them <laughs> to like nice. see what all the other words that they were saying about it. And then I would like go through all these different situations of like, well, this is what I would do. This is how I acted in this situation that identifies more with that word. Yep. Yep. And yeah. so everything that you just told me, wait till, wait till I tell you what a high C is. Everything that you just told me actually sh proves to me why the, the profile said you yep. dominate a high C S. You might relate more to the definition of a high S, but what right there, your actions are 1000% high C. Nobody yep. reads that entire profile. Nobody reads all of the words. No one puts themselves in scenarios except for high C's. <laughs> That's so um, funny. I've taken lots of different tests like this before and I'm always very high on on both of those two that are like that similar so it's always like very it's almost equally split every time I've taken stuff it's really hard so to fool the, the it's really hard to fool it too I, I I've taken it just to see if I could fool it and because they ask the same question 16 times different ways you can't fool it yeah it's just 
<laughs> yeah, it really is. Yep. No, uh, we're having a little bit of uh, computer issues with the slideshow, but we'll keep going. So a high S, their pros are that they, they, they can think through things, but they can think through things without analyzing too much, right? Their pros are that they have patience. A high S has the most patience out of everybody in this uh, in these categories, right? Um, a high S will be consoling. They will listen to their friends. They're they're very likely to say yes, right? They say yes to a lot of things, whether or not they might want to do it or not. Most of the time, when a high S says yes to something that they didn't want to do. Because they're a high S and they, they kind of feed off of everybody else's energy and emotion, they're likely to validate that they said yes and they feel good about it, um, even when they didn't want to. I'm a high S. I have to be careful saying yes to too many things. But sometimes when I don't have a whole lot going on and somebody asks me something that I don't really want to do, I say yes, and then it brings me out of that mood. It, it perks me up. I like it. Um, but Think family man, think putting others before themselves, making decisions based upon around others, uh, other people's actions and decisions and feelings. Um, they feel emotion very, very well. Like I said, there's a big difference between that, that high I emotional side and feeling emotions on the high S side, right? I can watch a tearjerker movie and feel sad in that moment, I can, I can feel the empathy towards those actors in those situations. But as soon as the movie's over, it didn't put me in any sort of mood. Now a high eye, if they watch a tearjerker in the wrong situation or stance, they're going to feel emotional after the movie's done. And they have a hard time getting out of it unless they use their other personality trait to try and trigger that um yes, those are also the easiest people to get along with yes high s's are the easiest people to get along with do you know why because they're getting along with you because <laughs> they're adaptable so to yep. speak yep high s's are the most adaptable in all of this now the problem with a high s let's talk about the cons because they're adaptable they say yes to things they don't want to say yes to because they're based their decisions based upon other people's emotions, they don't want to offend people. So their cons are that they're not direct in times they don't want to be direct. They will overextend themselves for people, we, even if they don't want to. They hold in their emotions and they bottle it up. And high S's are the biggest ticking time bombs unless they keep themselves in check or control. There's a reason why you hear me say some things that come out of my mouth that I probably shouldn't say. I'm a high S. Something was built up, something pent up for a while. I've learned to get it out faster uh, because I used to hold it all in, right? My parents were very, very um, strict growing up. My parents were very strict, sober, whatever. What do you call that? Um, when you live in a household that very Christian, very strict, very... I'm losing, I don't know the word, but um, I believe my parents developed my high S. I wasn't allowed to have an opinion. I wasn't allowed to say things. I didn't get asked my opinion. It was what it was. And it was a, um, you know, it was the way it is, right? Dinner is at six. And if you're not at dinner at six, you, you will not be watching TV that night. If you're not at dinner at six, <laughs> you will be going to bed early. If you're not at dinner at six, good luck asking to go hang out with friends on the weekend. Um, there was very strict rules at my house. I had to follow them to a T um, or I was, I was, something was taken away. And I believe that my parents developed my high S. Um, I always listened to my parents because there's no other way around it. Um, so a high S, it, it's very, you gotta, you gotta bank upon your other secondary thing. High S see you I have a I I I strongly believe Melissa you struggle because a high C has its con is very similar to a high a high S see a high S wants to make decisions based upon other people's emotions but then a high C 
wants to make decisions based upon all the data. And their con is that they go into analysis paralysis. They need to read every single word. They need to know the subject inside and out before they make a decision. So then they know the subject inside and out before they make a decision, but then their high S kicks in and they hear something that they haven't heard from somebody else. And now they got to go do research on that because they don't want to make that decision because one, they feel like, boom, I got a new factor. I, don't, I need more information to make that decision. And, oh my gosh, this person doesn't like this stance. So I need to, I need to figure this out. I need to balance this. Um, a high SC um, probably struggles at times because they can't really bank off of their other personality in some situation. Is yeah, that, so for, uh, Melissa said that's true. Yeah. For a high C, I'd, I'd, ha I'd like to have my CPA be a high C because he's so accurate and he spends so much time making sure everything's okay. They're dependable, they get it done. Uh, they'd rather do the task and, and look at the sheet of paper than to go talk to the people about it. They'd rather give you that piece of paper and tell you to go talk to them, but you can make sure that it's, it's accurate because they did it for you. That's sort of the C person. Yep. Um, the cons to a high, uh, well, we talked about the pros, right? Uh, pros, they listen, they will, they will wait, they will help you, they'll give you the shirt yep. off their back. Yep. Um, high I's or high, high S's are great friends. Um, there are people that, that want to hang out that, or tend to want to hang out with people. Um, but their con is that they, they're, they're indecisive. They can't make decisions unless somebody else makes it for them. They'll make decisions um, that they don't even want to make just so that way they can go with the masses. They're the conforming people. They will say yes because everybody else said yes. Even if they have an opinion, they don't want to voice it. They don't want to feel embarrassed. They don't want to say it. Um, you know, when a high S decides to go against the grain, as soon as they raise their hand and be like, nope, I object, it, they just, they shudder. They, they, there's a complete and utter paralyzation that happens. And they've done that too many times in life. So they stop voicing their opinion because they know once they do, they're going to get clammy. They're going to stop. They're going to freeze. They're going to feel embarrassed and they're not going to be able to say what they want to say. And so then they're going to have all these eyes looking at them, and then they're just going to shut down, give up, and conform. And the more that they do that, the more that they just won't raise their hand and voice their opinion. The other thing about a high S that's, um, that stinks, and I guess we'll just do this on this training. Um, I've been working with Melissa on her high S. Little does she know this. It's mainly, this is probably the major reason why she's been frustrated with me lately. I'm making Melissa make decisions in her life right now. Her and I have a property that we're under, well, we're not in contract on, but we bought a flip together. And I know that she's a high S and I know that she's looking to me for, to me to make these decisions. And I don't want to make these decisions. I want Melissa to grow. I want Melissa to break out of her shell and I want Melissa to make some decisions. There will be some decisions that I'll help make with her but she's very frustrated with me because I'm not making decisions with her. <laughs> and, you know, and you know, it's interesting about that, Bruce, those people, you're actually helping her more than you think, even though she's struggling and fighting it, you're actually, I, people used to, I could always tell them this because they come in and go, Harry, we need to do X, Y, and Z, right? And I said, I don't know, which one should we do? And then they get that frustrated look on their face because that meant they had to make that decision and God help them if they made the wrong one, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, was it going to kill them if they made that wrong decision? No. So you're actually helping Melissa because at some point she'll gain some of that confidence and be able to make some of those decisions. I used to call for that S group was called the calculated group. You know, they got to, it's got to be a hundred percent, 99% before they want to pull that trigger. Mm -hmm. no, and you can take an S and you can take an S and say, would you rather go put your money in the bank and get 2%? or put it in the stock market and make 15. They'll pick the bank. Mm -hmm. Secure, it's safe. safe. I'm safe. Yep. Yeah, anyway. Yep. So little, well, I'll just, just say it. I always tell Melissa this. Melissa and I, I, I was Melissa when I first started in real estate. There's a reason why I said, it's so weird that you're an SC because when I first started, I was a domineering S. And when I read through the rest of this profile, I thought I, I thought I was a little bit of a C, but I, I don't think I don't think I am. Um, I know what Melissa has to go through to break through because I, I had to do it myself. 
If anybody else is a high S and needs to break through that and wants to, call me. We'll set up some calls. Um, what is, Chris, what do you, what, never, I would have taken you for an I, so that surprises me. Who, me? Yeah. I have to. I'm, I'm, that's my other characteristic I'm developing. I'm working on my I and C. We'll get into that, and we'll get into that. What do you What do you mean, Brady? What's going on? I know that if I'm. I just mean like if if I'm not like uh, if I'm not making like taking myself out of my comfortability zone and like and like kind of pushing myself in different ways that it's not going to change me. So like yesterday it was like frustrating that I like I felt like I was behind Legion and I was like missing out on some things. So I was like I need to make myself more uncomfortable and like get myself out there more. Um, yeah, you're a high, you're a high yeah. ass working on yourself, aren't you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I can read that from a mile away. You're a very, you're a very high ass. You listen, you sit there and you, you interact and you chime in, but only when the opportunity arises, you don't need to domineer the conversation and all of that. Um, Melissa's, Melissa's working on it. She's, I'm growing that high D in, inside of her. We all have all of these personalities inside of us. We can all be, I'm not a numbers guy. I'm not a high C, but I can read data. I can dive into it for a few hours. I don't like it. It's just not natural to me. So it makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, a high S needs to start to be uncomfortable. Um, if you guys see my email signature, it says fail often and fail forward. It's because I was a high S who very much struggled to make decisions. And the more and more I let things go without having tough conversations with people, without being direct with my clients, without being direct with, with um, you know, people in my life, my family. I mean, think about it. I just gave you guys a glimpse of what I grew up with with my parents. Half of you, half of you that have met my parents, you know I do, not, I do not feed into that anymore. I will tell my parents like it is with the utmost respect but they're not gonna control me anymore. They never really did, it wasn't their fault. It was just how they ran their household. Um, I'm not gonna make decisions, Melissa. I'm gonna help you make decisions. I'm gonna help you grow. And that is because I do feel like you are, you are a spitting image of me when I first started. And the only way that I got to where I'm at is when I started making decisions. Quite frankly, Bruce wouldn't be doing his job if he made those decisions for you because you'd always have to rely on somebody like a Bruce and you don't want to do that as you get into real estate and get further down the road. Yep. Cool. So I'm sure Bruce knows what I was. <laughs> Harry, I'm sure working in a newspaper business, you put your high D hat on more often than you ever wanted to. I was a 94% on D and an 82 on I. Yep. Because they did it in percentages. Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, one I used to do was a percentage. I always say I'm the 99% percentile high D and it's weird. I'm a, I'm a 98% percentile high S I, I'm a weird chameleon. Yeah. Go ahead, Chad. No worries. Let's be recorded. Let's get into the high C's. So we've, we've introduced to high C quite a bit uh, or uh, a few different times, but let's just break it down. So a high C, they like to analyze. They like to understand, they like to go through and, um, you know, um, make sure that they have all the data. They want to make sure that, you know, things are right. High C's typically are, you know, the early, the early people to, um, you know, they're the, they're the people right on time or early to a party. They're the ones who get to church 10, 15 minutes early so they can sit in the same area, um, same pew, same seat even sometimes. Um, a high I keep saying I, don't I? I meant C. C. We're on to C. Talking about C's. C's are calculated. They need the data. They need the information. Are you getting back on? Yeah. Okay. Um, a, high, a high C likes to do their research. They like to go into it. So here's how I know when I have a high C start in real estate. They knock out their foundation very, very, very quickly. 
meaning they like to get their website up and running. They like to make sure that they go through the checklist that the office sends out. They like to make sure their business cards are ordered. They like to make sure that their, their, um, their uh, database is tidy. They'll, they'll be happy to do data entry for hours a day. And unless they use their other personality, they have a hard time getting into the action side of things, making the phone calls and, and going through that. So if a high C, I keep going into real estate, we're going we're gonna to jump back into real estate, but a high C loves the data. They love being calculated. They love spreadsheets. They love numbers. They love uh, data pieces. Um, if a high C learns a new topic or hears something that they've never heard before, mark my words, they're going to kind of remember that and go back and write it down and do research on it, right? They're also really uh, tough on themselves. Ah, yes. That's they're their own about. worst critic, right? Yeah. I should have got 100% on that test. Hell, if I'd have got an 80, I'd have had a party. But them, an 80 would have been failing, right? That's, that's the difference between a C. Yep, that's what I was about to go into. The cons. The cons of a high C are they're very hard on themselves. They're, they're I don't want to sound this der derogatory. They're very self-centered. And it's not a bad thing. That's actually more of a, a pro on a high C than it is anything else. Um, because they, they can make decisions as long as they have all of the data, but they're, they're hard on themselves. They, don't, they, won't, they won't want to make a decision unless they have all the data. So that's where it can be a pro and a con. High Cs are notorious for analysis paralysis. Um, Erica, let's pick on you for a little bit. When you went to take your real estate test, what, what were some feelings that went through? And, and how, did, how did the prep up to your real estate test go for you? Just, just brief synopsis. Um, so I took a month between when I finished my class and when I took the test just to study. <laughs> because real. I wanted to do really well. <laughs> <laughs> what, were you, will you share what you did? Did you pass the first time? Did you score high? Uh, yeah, I do? passed the first time. I brought my score. I'll happily share with you <laughs> if you want. Hang on. Oh, wait, she's got it. She, she can't even just tell me what it is. She wants to make sure she validates in her mind that what her words are going to be is exactly what's on that paper. Yeah. That's so that's sit there and go, I think I got an 86, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so let's see. And believe it or not, while she's looking that up, the re one of the reasons she does that is she doesn't want people to be critical of her if, it's, if it was off a, a point or so right? Like it really matters. Hey, I think it was in the high 80s. Most people go cool, right? Not her. She, if, if all of a sudden it was an 82, she'd feel really bad that she told everybody it was in the high 80s. So for her to be accurate is really important for a high C. It's really important for them. It's a problem. Not really, but it is. Um, <laughs> it's not no, a problem, it right? Let me guess, Erica, you learn to adapt to it, don't you? Yeah. Some, yeah. I mean, some, it helps me do well and things like that. Uh, so it was a 91% on this, the national and then an 86 on the, the state. Did you hear that? Did you hear her tone just fluctuate down? Yep. A 91 on the national, but an 86, 86. on the state. <laughs> and I passed, so. <laughs> yep. Disappointment in herself. <laughs> I love it. Mostly I just didn't want to have to come back and do it again. I was very determined not to have to do that thing twice. The yeah. Bingo. So that, that's, that's just it. A high C um, will gather data in places where they don't need to. Um, a high C will, will go through analysis paralysis. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a DS. When I first started, if you recognize, I pretty much was only an S. I, I really struggled to find my secondary character. And when I took that test, or when I, when I was done with the school, I know that I, sh I stink at making decisions. So when I got on, I'll never forget when I got on the computer and I started to look at the, the schedule or the, 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 you know, trying to schedule my test, I couldn't make a darn decision. Like what day should I do it in the morning? Should I do it in the afternoon? Uh, when should I do it? And it was me being indecisive. And that's why I always thought I was a high C a little bit because I thought me being indecisive uh, was me analyzing things. I wasn't really caring. I was just trying not to take that test. And so I just booked that test, went in, 
took it. I, I mean, I studied a little bit. Um, I was more nervous than anything. Every time I went to study for that test, I would get so nervous I couldn't study. It was awful. Um, but anyways, a high C. Be careful. Just be careful when you're a high C because all three of the other personalities do not need the same data points that you need. And we'll get into why I'm saying be careful. All of these personalities, be careful in real estate. I would say that the high I and the high C's have to be the most careful. And I'll, and I'll explain why in a little bit here. Um, any questions on high C's? Anybody else in the room besides you know, the ones that have voiced it? Tiffany, um, anybody else a high C? I know Ariana is, right? Ariana, you're a CS? Very high C, just a C. <laughs> just a C. Do you feel like you're a, um, do you feel like you're a, an S is your secondary? I feel like I have a little bit of like something else. I'm not sure if it could be like an S possibly. Gotcha. So not when sure. you say, I'm not sure if it could be an S possibly, sounds like you're an S. <laughs> <laughs> there was no decision there right and I haven't really seen you like bust out of every shell that there ever was to be a high eye um mm -hmm. so I'm gonna guess you're you're there <laughs> any questions around any of these again there's pros and cons to every single one now we're gonna go into more of the intricacy behind it um so yeah, Derek, you know, you can tell right here, he's a high C, but what do you think Derek's other personality type is? High, 100%. He's a high I, exactly, yeah, right? So he's, gonna, he's gonna be the last person on the chat to say something. Somebody else just say something, watch. He'll have something else to say. Derek, are you here? I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for someone to say something. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, I can't. I can't say much to that. Honestly, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the high C analyzes the situation and puts in something to stump there. <laughs> I, I can't do that. That's not me. That's awesome. <laughs> so now the next slide that we're gonna go to. Go ahead, Kama. Um, this. Uh, no, where's the other graph? Where's that circle? Yeah. Uh, you did what? I have to remake the entire. Oh crap. Where'd you where'd you get that at? I can find it. So while you're looking, um, I'm a CI, but it seems like I have absolutely none of the characteristics of a C except for the downsides. The paralysis, um, I don't I hate data entry, I hate numbers. Um, I don't really have any of the positive characteristics, only the negative, and that scored is my dominant. So I thought that was kind of weird. Well, let's, that, good. Okay, so whenever I'm saying something that you're not seeing, please bring it up because I can, I can uh, I'm not using the right words then, Bert. They're typically numbers driven and data entry. You're absolutely a high C. Let me, let me show, share with you some, some reasons why. Hang tight, I can't walk and chew gum. I'm trying to find a uh, a diagram here. You got it? Cool. Yeah. So a high C, um, it, it's not always numbers and data driven, that personality style. Um, it's just easier for me to talk around that. Let me ask you this. When you, so you're a high IC, right? Uh, CI. Okay, CI. Yep. Cool. So when you got into real estate, you signed up with 8Z. Yes. Okay. How much research did you do into that? Um, probably five or six days of looking up different brokerages. Do you feel like it was enough? Uh, given the end result there, no. Okay. So do you feel like that a combination between your C and your I caused you to just, you know, you finally got to a place where you did a lot of research on things and you just made a decision to go over to 8Z. And then when you left 8Z and was trying to make the decision to come over to us, 
What happened? I'm, I'm sorry, could you please repeat that? I've got a lot of background noise here. No, you're good. When you decided to make the decision to come over to us, what did you go through? What happened? What was your thought process, your plan, your, you know, how did you tackle that? Um, it was totally different the second time around. I just spoke to people. Um, I just had conversations about um, the culture is mostly what I cared about. Why? Um, because frankly, my experience with 8Z was terrible. There was, there was no culture or community. Um, it was, it was nothing but high D's, I guess, is the best way to put it in this context. But, but, so you did five or six days of research, yeah. right? The first time around. And so how did you know to change the way that you approached entering to the next brokerage? That's why you're a high C, Bert. You have the intuitive um, instinct to know that when you make a bad decision in life, or not even a bad decision, but a decision you didn't want to make, you're not, you're, you have the uncanny ability that a lot of us don't have. You see, a lot of us go through insanity. We do the same things over and over again, expecting different results. You instinctually knew that you needed to change up your, your way in which you were going to go find the next brokerage that you were going to do, because you knew that if you approached it the same exact way, you were going to get the same result. See, I don't, high I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I feel like okay. I constantly berate myself for it, that way. You just said the definition of insanity. I feel like I often do just spin my wheels doing the same thing, hoping just one more try. That's honestly how I view myself. Well, is it one more try or is it something that you're changing? I feel like just just now I'm starting to break into changing things. But previously, I feel like through my adult life, it's been a repetition of failed acts. And I think we all, I think we all will. Okay, let me just give you what I, what I see in you and the reason why I see that you're a high C. Whenever you get a lead, you call me to go through that one particular script for that one particular situation. Mm -hmm. That's a high C, that's very analytical, that's deep, that's detailed, right? You, just, you don't have to be numbers, a high C is just detailed. They very much do not want to fail. They very much wanna go over those things. That's why I have no problem with you. Most of the people on here, after I get off the call, after I'm ending the calls with them, I will say, hey, that sounds like something you should practice on your own for a little bit. I barely ever say that to you because I know you're going to go do that. Your high C is a, um, it's a, it's a story. It's a picture. It's a, it's a flow chart. It might not be an Excel spreadsheet, numbers, and data. Does that make sense? I see you as a high C. Um, and maybe I'm not using the right words to to get you there, but that's okay too. No, the uh, the the picture and story part that actually did a kind of strike a bell with me. Yep, that's still a high C. It's just um, detailed in a different way. Yep. Never viewed myself like that. That's uh, that's a pretty interesting thought. Mm -hmm. You know, and, I and, think. Oh, go sorry, first. Go ahead. No, please, please. So I think I think Zach, you have to look at it a little bit differently. Um, so you're hard on yourself, which is that particular characteristic. If you looked at your very first day of, of real estate and where you are today, it would be night and day, right? Yeah. But you don't, you don't see it that way. You see it as, you know, repetition, doing the same thing. That's just not true. Um, cause I guarantee you, if we had a video of you the first day when, where you are today, it would be dramatically different and, but you don't recognize it that way. Um. The other thing that, you know, I'm looking at this chart right here and I, and I go back around to is, is the similar thing that we said at the beginning of the class. Anybody who has the two personality traits that cross the, the circle, so the CI and the IC, the DS and the SDs in the room, you're, you're, you're different. You're, you're not different, different, you're rare. Most people in here that take this test will be 
uh, their secondary piece will be beside on one end or the other, their secondary piece. So if you're a high C, typically speaking, your secondary piece is a high CD or a CS. And then if you're a high I, you're typically a high ID or a high IS. And so this goes back around to, I think, the beginning, Bert. You have one of those different personalities that it, you look at this circle. They're not meant to mesh. And so you're, you're, you, you have to go through the same things I go through. I actually have to tell myself like what hat to wear that day because my, the D and the S just don't intermix very well. And when I say, well, it's, it's, it's like water and oil. Like they will sit together in a cup together, but they're, they're really going to struggle to overlap and in intermix. Yeah, they collide. Yep. Absolutely. And I instead like of holding ha instead of holding hands, they're boxing one another. And a DI yeah. would hold hands, and a CD would hold hands, and a CS hold hands, but not a CI. It's like no, yes, no, yes. It's just how it works. Yep, that could be some of could be some of it too. But anyways, yeah. uh, take a look at this. This is where we talk about a little higher level. So we went through all of them individually, and that's why I said if you're if you're absolutely on the high end of the you know, uh, Richter scale of whatever trait you have, then look at the, look at that, um, look at the bolder area, I guess. So a high C, you're the analyzer, but if you're a CD, it's an implementer, meaning you can make decisions based upon data and research and things that you can think through, which means you implement, you not only make a decision, you execute, right? Um, a high DI, uh, persuader, right? You made a decision, but you use the gift of gab to get what you want. Uh, a high I, a high IS, a relater, right? You're, you're, you can relate to anybody because you can talk to them. With your high I, you'll go and talk and have a conversation with anybody. But because you're a high S, you relate to people because you listen to their passions, you listen to their tone, you listen to their voice, you listen to their fluctuations. You, you, you feed off of their emotions, and so you can relate. Uh, SC, a coordinator. Did, did you guys freeze? Uh, yeah, it's not the coordinator. Okay, I saw it. Yeah, here is uh, everybody's camera was glitching. So a high CS uh, coordinator, right? Think about that. They don't want to make decisions but they do like to analyze. And so what they're going to need to tell, be told is, is, hey, from a high D or a high I, hey, guys, why don't we do this? Why don't you take the reins on this and go do this? Okay, sounds good. Because somebody else told me to. I'm going to coordinate this. I'm not going to be the, the idea behind it. I'm just going to coordinate the idea. Um, so as you can see, everybody's usually doesn't cross over, right? I'm a supporter and a conductor. Those conflict, right? How can I support something if I'm conducting it? And how can I um, conduct something? Well, yeah, if you're supporting it, right? Questions around the disk profile. So on this chart in particular, what are the numbers? It goes from one to 60. Um... Yeah, let me... Um, let me see, I think I found another one here that kind of will help you. Uh, make me host. I guess that was a C question. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I read that and I was like, oh, I don't really know what that is. I don't really care. Oh, they got good words around here. I'll just use that in the class. <laughs> So those numbers, um, there's, a, there's a correlation there. Um, so it, 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 this is where you start to really, really break it down and really get really deep into the disk profile, right? So um, here's SD. I'm pretty much have to be in the middle at all times because that's, that's exactly where I fluctuate, right? But do you see how much some of these things overlap? Mm -hmm. 
and then we won't take too long, but uh, you guys can read through this. You just find these things on Google. Um, look at that, Chad Q. Brown. Chad, is this your website? I think he I said he had to go on a phone call. Yeah, he's on a work call. Um, but the disk profile gets pretty deep. I don't, I've taken some deep classes, but the, the premise is still the same. You learn the basics and it'll help you. Um, but that's what I think those numbers are. Um, they, they kind of correlate with a chart where it'll show you kind of like, you know, why some people are chameleons and why some people aren't. Like if Michelle, uh, uh, Michelle Kramer um, were to like actually purchase the test, um, I'm going to guess she is going to land somewhere in this, um, this inner circle, I guess, if you will, where there's three personality traits on each one of these, uh, you know, these spectrums. She's, she's definitely the chameleon of the group. I've been kind of trolling through all of these different things. And um, yeah, she's definitely the. The interesting thing on that, Bruce, is you're never going to change your dominant. It's going to be very hard to change your dominant personality. You can adapt to it, change it slightly, but it's who you are. It's, it's your DNA, so to speak. But they will always tell you that you can move to an I and an S and a C, but you have to focus on it. You have to spend some time train, think of the characteristics of that. And I can give you a classic example. You know, as a 28 year old and the president of Knight Ritter, you know, I think I'm Mr. Hot, hot crap. And, you know, I asked him one day, gee, you know, Tony, why do you give me some projects but you don't give me others. I just don't get it. And I was taking him to the airport, believe it or not. And he goes, well, sh Harry, hell, Harry, that's simple. If I want the hill taken down and I don't care if people are dead when I get to work around the hill, I give it to you. But if I want uh, the hill down and people cheering behind you, sure not gonna give it to you. I was devastated, guys. And so I said, well, what the hell do I need to do? Cause I don't wanna be like that all my life. And he goes, you gotta learn another trait. You gotta learn how to, work with others and get other people to do some of the things you do. So I started figuring out, okay, maybe I need to be an I or, you know, cause I had taken the disc. And so that's where I sort of focused my attention was how do I move some of that characteristics over to an I, but yet still be my D, right? And that's what some of you will learn. It's like what Bruce is trying to do with Michelle, believe it or not, he's trying to move her from her dominant to pick up another one that will help her in her career as she moves forward in real estate. Yep. Off it's not necessary. Yeah, it's not necessarily changing who she is. It's adapting to some of those things that will make her better at what she does. Right? It'll give her that balance. Bingo. No, that's actually before we segue into how does this real estate uh, uh, work with real estate, let's talk about that. Cause I'm I'm on that journey every day. I wish I could get rid of my high S altogether. I completely wish I could. <laughs> but at the, at the same token, though, I wouldn't be your coach. If I didn't have a high S in me, That's I would right. not be your coach. I wouldn't have you the wouldn't patience. Be Bruce. Yeah, I wouldn't be me, right? But I used to try and get rid of that thing because I used to spend countless hours showing buyers houses, 30, 40, 50 houses, because I never wanted to grow the pair and direct the conversation and accept the expectation that we're only going to see five to seven homes. And so I really, really, really worked on uh, making sure my high D came out. I actually, so what's funny is, is, and, and this is where Harry might feel this way. A lot of people think I'm a high I because that's actually what I've been trying to work on. I tried so hard not to get rid of my high S at the beginning, um, but to be more of a high I. I'm, an, I'm a natural um, introvert. I want to be an extrovert. I want to be a high I. I want to talk. Um, the first time I ever did public speaking in college, I had to stand up in front of a, a college course, a college class, and my college class I took on the weekends. Um, I worked full time during the week, and I did full time school on the weekends, so eight hours of college on the on Saturdays and Sundays. And so those classes were kind of tiny. I had to public speak about I don't even know what the topic was in front of three other classmates, and I trembled, I froze, I didn't deliver it, I got an F. It was awful. And from that day forward, I wanted to be more boisterous. I wanted to be more outgoing. I wanted to develop that high eye. I get into real estate, I take the disc profile and bam, 
I learned that the high eye is there. I see the pros and cons. I see what I can use to develop it. I see how I can go through that. And through that journey, I just became a high D. I have no idea how and why, but that's what happened. Um, changing I worked on C. Yep. As Bruce worked on that, I worked on C for me because I was dealing with millions and millions of dollars and didn't want to screw it up, right? So I had to learn some of that. Um, but it's never going to be who I am. But knowing it's one of my weaknesses, and that's what Bruce is saying, Bruce recognizes it as a weakness, so he works on it. He doesn't have to work on being an S. Hell, he's already an S, yep. right? But he works on, on those weaknesses that he has to make him sort of round, right? Yep. And, and what you notice is, is that every con in each one of those personalities, every con, each uh, um, uh, the opposite, or not even just the opposite, but another personality in there has a, a, a trait that can help that con, right? I'm a high S means I don't make decisions very well. Well, I'm a high D, which who makes decisions quickly. Now, I didn't say well, just quickly. Um, <laughs> And so what, what I encourage you guys to do is, is take your personality, understand that the cons in your personality are your limiting beliefs. They are your limiting factors, right? I hope that Sherry is proud of herself for getting over and, and door knocking. She's got the personality to door knock and cold call and network and go to open houses. But because she's a high I, she needs to use the con in that high eye to her advantage. She's impulsive. Well, her past has told her, gosh darn it, I, I wish I wasn't so impulsive. So if she uses that to her advantage and goes through and just says, all right, I'm going to go door knock. I'm in an impulsive mood and I don't want to door knock. I'm just going to go do it, right? Um, the other things that, that a high eye does is she's going to have to work on keeping her emotions in check, right? Well, who's the best person to keep their emotions in check? The high C's, right? High C's keep their emotions in check because their emotions are based upon data and their emotions are based upon what they're going through and what they know to be true. You can't trick facts to a high C, right? And so that's what, that's what Sherry will work on. That'll be a hole in her business. Sherry won't naturally like to track. She won't naturally like to, um, you know, know her numbers. She won't naturally like to do data entry. She will naturally just want to run by the seat of her pants. And so if she works on those other attributes and grows some other personalities, that con and her high eye will go down. I hate data entry. See, high eyes typically hate data entry unless you're like Bert. But see, he's a high, he's a high CI and he still doesn't like data entry because his C is just a little different. Um, no, this is good. That's the other We're, thing it does is it, it teaches you how to relate to the other people. Give you a classic example in today's world. Somebody's going to buy my own motor home, calls me on the phone. He is definitely a C beyond your wildest imagination, right? So I know I'm going to meet the guy. So what do I bring? I bring one of those little things that you can uh, lay on and then crawl underneath the motor home. Hell, you and I wouldn't go look under a damn motor home. But I bet I knew this high C was going to want to look under that motorhome. He thought that was the greatest thing. He bought the motorhome, but he loved the fact that I brought that so he could get underneath it, right? Because you learn those personalities. And so in the real estate world, which is where Bruce is going and how does it relate, when you learn how to, to deal with an I or an S or a C, you become much more effective, right? If I was in this business world today, I'd make sure I hire an I, I hire an S, I hire a C, right? I don't need another D. Hell, I'm a D. I want everybody else because mm -hmm. then you can make that work because you know how to relate to them because you learned about the disc. So one of the things I would tell you is if you get the disc information that Bruce shared with you, study it because it's going to tell you how to deal with those people. It tells you how to deal with the Bruce's of the world. It tells you how to deal with the Brady's of the world. And so they then like you, right? Yep. They go, God, that Bruce is sharp, man. He knows he gets me, right? Well, no, Bruce gets your personality and he knows how to deal with that personality. Anyway, Bingo. Okay. Yep. So don't work on your strengths. Use them to your <laughs> advantage. Um, don't work on your strengths. Use them to your advantage. Okay, now, on the flip side of it, instead of dwelling on your cons <laughs> or trying to get rid of them, 
how do I say this? Don't work on your cons, work to see the other personality that can trump that con and go focus on those strengths. Does that make sense? So I didn't work on trying to be, I didn't work on trying to, um, you know, um, how do I say this? I didn't work on trying to make sure I didn't make decisions based upon other people's emotions. What I worked on was just making decisions. And that comes from the high. So I didn't work on, I didn't focus on my cons. What I did was I recognized I'm a high S. I don't want to be a high S. I want to talk to people. I want to make decisions. I want to go through things and I want to be more boisterous. And I want to go and I want to be able to approach a group at a, a networking event and just talk to them and relate to them and do all of those things, right? I didn't say, well, because I can't, I'm just not going to go to networking events. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to work on my con by not doing it. No, I'm going to tackle it head on. Um, go through that and see who you are and see what you need to work on and start working on those types of things. Start developing a different side of a, of a personality. Now let's talk about how this relates to real estate. Let's get out of here. So all of these things are going to help you. You're going to start to notice this. Here's one of your first exercises and action items to take away from this class is go start being judgy go go start analyzing your parents your spouse your kids your family your friends start to pick up on who they are don't put them in a box right you know if you put me in that high d box it's going to offend me because i have a secondary personality so don't tell somebody that they're type a just start to judge them see if you can pick up on the so on the cues Right. Just like I picked up on Zach's cues and he picked up on his own by simply saying, wow, that was such a high C statement because I noticed the numbers and I needed to know what they meant. Start to do that when you interact with people. It's going to start to help you figure out who you are and it's going to help you also have better relations with people. Right. I know that I work with a high eye. I have to be very careful with what I say to Kama and Jimmy. I don't want to offend them, but they also need to understand that things just come out of my mouth at times, right? Go through and judge people. I want them to judge me. I want them to know why I say the things I say and vice versa. I try and figure out why, you know, why uh, Kama, I can take, I can tell Kama one thing and she goes really, she goes really, really happy, really, really excited, but I can tell her one thing and I can put her in the dumps quicker than anybody. I don't mean to, I just have to work on it. I have to see it. Um, I have to judge her. I have to judge the state of being that she's in. If she comes in in the morning and doesn't say hello, I'm not gonna bug her. If she comes in in the morning and is very boisterous and brings me a coffee or whatever the heck she does and she's listening to the music, then I'm gonna probably bug her and bombard her with some things that we need to get started on that day. Start doing that to your own in your own life, right? Quit being you all the time and dominating your world into somebody else's. I have a daughter. She's five years old. She's a morning person. But it's beyond me to treat her as if she's in a good mood every morning. She's most, mostly in a good mood every morning. But when she's in a bad mood, I'm not going to sit there and, and do the same things that we do and laugh and play when she's you know, in, in a good mood, right? Start walking through your life and understanding and really being empathetic towards somebody else's personality. You'll start to pick up on it faster. You'll start to realize why they said what they said in the moment that they said it. Start doing that first action item. Second action item, I want you guys to watch how people shake your hands. So when I, in real estate, I learned that when I shake people's hands, I can start to pick up on their personality. I wish we were in class because I'd do this in a live example for you guys. But now, again, we're going to go through and how does this relate? You've got to remember everybody has a secondary type. Handshake. The high Ds will shake your hand with assertiveness. It's firm. And traditionally speaking, they want to get over that formality. High Ds are the first people to hold out their hand, to shake your hand. They want to get through the intro. Let's go. Hello, my name is Bruce. Nice to meet you. Let's go. Let's sit down. Let's get to our meeting. Let's get to our lunch. I'm starving. I want to order. Um, I want to know what you want to meet me for. 
I want to share with you what I'm when I want to meet with you for. That's what a high D does. It's a very assertive handshake, quick to the point, not too long. Um, sometimes aggressive. Sometimes you get those 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 real firm handshakers. Um, those those are typically have some sort of characteristic of a high D. What do you think a high I does? Longer handshake, more. It, Verbal engagement. Yes, very verbal, right? It's not just a handshake to them. Sometimes a high eye doesn't even know they're shaking a hand because they're just ready to tell you everything about what's going on in their life. What else? Sherry, are you a hugger? I am totally a hugger. High eyes are huggers. If you get somebody that's kind of like, oh, are, are you hugging? Do we, do we hug? Hug them. They're a high eye most likely, right? Um, um, a high eyes handshake will kind of be all over the place. Um, you don't really know what to expect. Expect a hug, expect a, a long handshake. Um, you know, if a high D shaking their hand, they're probably going to hold on to a high D's hand a little too long. Um, you know, um, high S or high eyes will maybe shake your hand and, 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 and bring it in and, and tap you on your back. Right. Um, high eyes are kind of all over the place, but they're the ones who are talking while you shake hands. They're the ones who don't understand the social cues of how long is too long, how short is too short, is somebody a hugger or not? They're just, they're just going in for that kill. Um, a high S, a high S shakes a hand out of the direction of the other person. I noticed that I do this. My handshakes are not firm. High S's handshakes are, are typically a little bit softer. Um, a, high, a high S will basically wait for the hug from Sherry before they start to hug. When I shake somebody's hand in their high D, my, my, I'm very steady and calm. And then when I feel their pressure, I'll give it myself a little bit more pressure because I want to match their high D personality. If I'm in high D mode and I just want to meet with you and get this thing done, I might not even shake your hand. And if I'm shaking your hand, it's probably going to be very assertive and quick. So that way I don't have to hug you. So that way I don't have to sit here and wonder who you are. I want to get to the point. Um, so a high S will kind of um, tailor to you. So if you have a high S come in for a sit down or a consultation, be the high D. Shake their hand, assertive and firm, and be done. They'll take to it. If a high S feels comfortable with you, they'll shake your hand. They won't change their firmness. But what they'll do is they'll do the double handshake. They'll shake your hand and then grab the back of your hand and shake it with two hands, right? A high S will, will give you a hug because they don't want to offend the high I, but they won't do it until you trigger that hug. How do you think a high C shakes a hand? Erica, do you shake hands? I do, but I let the other person go first. Kind yep. of initiate it. Yep. And do you care if you shake hands? No. Would you prefer not to shake hands? Um, I'm not going to force people to shake hands. So if oh, they wait, don't come back to hand, you're I'm a, a CS. You're a CS. So. Okay. So you do, you do kind of care. Okay. The dominating, dominating, dominating high uh, Cs, they don't really want to shake a hand. They probably, they might not even walk up. As, what's that? <laughs> I'm like, I don't mind not shaking hands. I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah. High, extremely high C's just don't care to. They'd rather not even get close enough for the opportunity. Um, if a high C shakes a hand, those most likely are the limp wrist. You're going to take everybody else's direction. Kind of like a high S. You're going to take everybody else's directions, but a high C more than anything, because they don't want to, they're kind of the ones that just kind of give you their hand and it's just like, do whatever you want with it because I'm done. I don't want to do it. Um, so very similar to a high S, but more limp um, doesn't have to happen. They might not even approach you. They might walk into your office and just go sit down across the table from you and just say hello verbally, right? So high or handshakes can be, can be a big thing. Eye contact. Eye contact is another, another big thing. And when I say eye contact, I don't mean directly 
face to face, eye to eye type of thing. Um, I mean, a couple of different things. There you go, Chad. <laughs> Chad, are you a high eye? CSI. CSI. Okay. Um, that's right. You're working on your high eye because of your acting stuff. That's right. Um, so eye contact, eye contact. When you walk into a room with a high D, they're going to scan you. They're going to judge you. They want to know if the person that they were supposed to meet matched their idea of you. That's the first thing they're going to do. They're going to lock eyes with you or they're going to scan you up and down. So to some people, they think that you, you might think they're checking you out. They're not really checking you out. They're just analyzing you. They want to know if you're that person. Um, the other thing a high D will do is they will appreciate contact. When you tell a high D something that you want to um, effectively get across and through their thick skull, because a high D has a thick skull, um, you want to you want to make eye contact with them when you're trying to make sure that they 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 get the point. A high eye, they're all over the place. They're going to be looking out the window. They're going to be looking at you at some point in time. They're going to be trying to read whatever writing is on your pen. They're going to try and figure out why the decor you have in your office doesn't match. They're going to, they're going to see a bunch of papers and get a little clammy. They're going to see a bunch of papers and wonder what's underneath them. They're just all over the place with eye contact. They don't really have any sort of one, one instance or one stance. They actually, if you're an introverted high eye, most likely you're gonna make them clammy if you lock eyes with them too much. Um, a high S, a high S, high S pretty much just takes direction. So a high S doesn't really care to lock eye contact. If you lock eye contact with a high S and they simply turn away really quickly, because you made them feel uncomfortable, quit locking eyes with a high S. High eyes or high S's won't typically do it unless they want to judge you. Let a high S judge you. The way that a high S will judge you is when they know you're not looking. So at moments, if you're a high D, I have to make sure I have to look away from people. I have to look down at the table and I have to give a high S enough time to scan me because I already scanned them. Um, so just double check that, make sure that with a high S, they're not going to want to lock eyes. They may, but you're going to make them feel uncomfortable. Don't do it too many times. Um, they're not wanderers. They're more of just, uh, they'll, they'll appear past you over your shoulder, through the table. They'll look down a lot. A high C, a high C will look at you in your eyes when you're telling them the things they, that they want to hear or that's new to them. If you're telling them things that they already know, they're not, they don't need to look at you because they're not learning anything new. They already know it, they're rolling their eyes. They typically will look at the, the pieces of paper. They will look at their computer. Here's the other reason why I know I have a high C. High Cs will constantly take notes. Uh, Tiffany, Melissa, um, Erica, Ariana, do you guys take notes? I'm taking notes right now. <laughs> Erica? Yeah, I've got a page. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, some high C's take mental notes, but mark my words, a high C's eye contact typically looks down at their paper, at, at what their notes are. Yep, they love notes. Uh, they don't want to forget the data. They don't want to forget things, right? Um, so those are your eye contacts. Um, amount of words, right? A high D uses very quick words, very short, sweet, to the point, bullet points. A high I, they have to paint the picture. They simply have to tell you from ground zero of how everything it all started and how it all evolved to get to that one instance of what they really wanted to tell you. A high S, um, a high S can use a lot of words. They're, they're, like a high I, I wouldn't say they're over explainers. They're, they're storytellers. A high S can be an over explainer. 
right? If, a high, if I say something, I'm in high S mode and I say something and I don't see a response right away, high S is hate silence. If I don't see a response right away, then I'm going to try and explain it again in a different way. And then if I don't see it again, I'm going to explain it again in a different way. So a high S can use a lot of words. So if you're with a high S, validate them. When they say something, say, oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. Or if it doesn't make sense, ask them a question around it right away. Can you, can you repeat that in a different phrase? Can you repeat that in a different manner? Oh, yes, that makes sense. Oh, I see what you mean. Validate a high S, they'll use a lot less words. A high C. The amount of words they use is going to be dependent upon the amount of data you can provide to them, to be completely honest with you. High C's typically are more quiet and reserved. I mean, for those of you that know Ariana, she does not speak up very often. Erica, she does not speak up very often. I'm very careful to call those two out on scripts. I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. They're only going to use words when they want to use words. The words that come out of their mouth are calculated. They're clear and concise. They were planned. A high I, they just start talking. They're not planned at all. A high D, eh, it's semi-planned, but mainly just to get things going and to the point. And a high S, they just, they just, they're just high S's, just validate them. Um, actions, let's talk about this, right? So how can you start to judge people through their actions? We've talked about some of it in a setting, but let's talk about it at somebody's house. So I can pick up on personality traits very, very easily um, when I'm showing houses. What does a high D do? They go through the house in five or 10 minutes and they decide whether or not this is the right house for them. Extremely high Ds will make offers by touring a home in 30, 40, 50 seconds or less. A D with a, a separate personality will run through the home to validate this is something they want to take a second look through. So myself, I'm a high D. I'm not going to sit in every room for five minutes analyzing it. I'm going to run through the house to figure out the functionality and layout, make sure it hits the boxes that I want it to hit. And if it doesn't, I'm leaving. If it does, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to I'm going to take another peek around, but I'm going to be very quick. I'm still not going to spend 10 minutes in a room. I'm going to go, okay, I like this house. I like the functionality. I like where things are set up. Okay, living room. Does this work? Would I have to buy new furniture? Cool. It's big. I like big. It's open. I like open. Uh, my furniture won't fit. Cool. I need to make sure I remember that I need to buy new furniture. Next, um, is there enough rooms for my kids? Is there this? Is there that? Okay, cool. Next. Master bedroom. Is this something that I'm going to enjoy? Is this something that's going to be my oasis? Is this something that I'm going to uh, appreciate? Cool. Next. Where's the garage? Cool. Can I fit my vehicles in there? Awesome. Wait, do I need extra space? Is there a shed? Okay, cool. How's the yard? How much maintenance am I going to have to do? Okay, cool. Okay, I want to buy this house. That's how fast a high D can go through a house. Sometimes you don't even know that a high D went through a house twice. You simply won't even recognize it because it went through the first time so darn fast that you couldn't keep up and you were trying to flip on lights or look at cracks in the wall. A high eye. What does a high eye do? You better put your lasso on and you better wrangle them in. If you have a high eye, do not talk to them. My God, they will just talk to you. Next thing you know, they won't even be looking at the house. They'll just be talking to you. Right, Sherry? 100%. She's like, I'm not, I was like, she's not even going to chime in anymore. <laughs> I so give if, up. Everybody if, knows I'm a hot mess. <laughs> if you're a high eye and you're a hot mess, don't feed into another hot mess. Right? So Sherry's going to have to be careful. If she gets a high eye, she's going to have to be careful showing them houses. Don't get them into conversation because they both naturally want to converse. They just naturally want to talk. I'm dealing with a high S potential listing. It's, or I mean a high I, it's, uh, it's a struggle. I, I've had to train myself <laughs> and stand at the, the front door in the kitchen and let them tour it or I get to just chatting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a high I would like to talk, 
they, they, they're very squirrely. Do you know one of the number one reasons why when I list a home, we tell people to take down personal effects and all the knickknacks and all that stuff? Because a high eye falls in love with the house for the decor and not the house. A high eye will be turned off from a house that's perfect for them because the wrong decor was in it. A high eye can't, if a high eye is a very modern type of person, very grays and whites, um, you know, uh, nice, you know, uh, you know, luxurious furniture or just, you know, more modern styles. And you walk into a home where there's a 70 year old living there with some doilies and some rocking chairs and some, you know, old wood furniture and some antiques and stuff uh, that can turn a high eye off from the best house that they've even ever seen. And you can't convince them and they well, you can try and convince them, but they'll have a hard time convincing themselves. So if you walk in and you see a, a house that's perfect for a high eye, it matches everything they ever wanted, and they tell you they don't like it, you better ask them a lot of questions because most likely they didn't like it because of stuff that's not even going to be there when they close. A high eye will typically run into a house and go straight to the reasons why they're buying a house. So if a high eye is buying a house and likes to entertain, they want to go straight to the kitchen and the backyard. Uh, even the basement, finished basement. Um, a high D, like I said, they're pretty methodical. They just walk in, they go left or right, they circle around the main floor, they go up to the second floor, circle around that, circle around the basement, and they're done, and go outside. Um, so a high I, be careful. They'll, they'll take a lot of time in houses unless you can wrangle them in, keep them focused. A high I, I constantly go, okay. So this house here, we've got to be to the next one. You guys go ahead and look around the house. I'm going to hang back and get the next one in the GPS. And I'll let you know when we need to leave. And then before I let them know when we need to leave, I pop it in the GPS and I go, okay, we got about 10 minutes in this house. I don't like making people feel like they're pushed. But if you don't do that with a high eye, I mean, when a high eye hears 10 minutes, they'll take 20. They don't realize it. Their internal clock does not, their 10 minute timer goes off after 20 minutes. Um, so with a high eye, just, just that's how you'll know. They're, they're more intrigued by the pictures on the wall, the doilies on the, the carpet, um, those types of things. A high S will want you to guide them through the house. A high S will want you to take the lead. So I don't guide people through a house. And so with a high S, I simply walk in the front door and I say, hey, this is your house. I want you guys to feel it the way you guys would live in it. I want you guys to walk through and I want you to turn on lights when you want. You see, you want to empower a high S. You want them to have control of those light switches. You want them to have control of the way that they flow through the property. They want you to guide them. And you're naturally going to feel like you should. But a high S is making their own decision by buying a house. So give them that power. So again, that with a high S, I just go, hey, I'm going to pop in the next address into my GPS. And here's the other thing I'm going to do for you, Mr. and Mrs. High S. I'm going to go see the house and I'm going to follow behind you. And I'm going to look for anything that I think might come up on inspection. So that way it doesn't scare you when it comes up. Sound good? Go ahead and do your thing and I'll do mine. A high C, what does a high C do? How do they walk through homes? Erica, how do you guys choose your home? Are you with a high CS? Do you, do, is your husband a high CS? Uh, no, um, I think he's like a DS. Um, trying to remember how we, how we made this decision. Um, we knew we, what we wanted, and so we made a list of everything that fit that. And then we just went toward just those situations that actually matched what we were looking for. We didn't wander and like just explore a bunch of options. Yep, it's very calculated. High C's don't really need or want to see a bunch of different homes. They eliminate a lot of homes online because they have exactly what Erica said, their list. Their list is like this, this, most of the time it's a need list and then a wants list. And then sometimes like a sub list, like a maybes list. 
maybe Erica had uh, uh, her own list and then her husband's list. And then they combined those lists to make one master list. And they went through and they did a lot of hours online, I would imagine. Is that correct? Were you, did you do more hours online? Yeah. Um, most of our hours online, though, were spent looking at like not new build homes and comparing prices to new build homes and realizing there wasn't a difference and that we would rather have a new build home. So bingo. That all the out. data. Yep. So they're walking into a home that they know all the data around, or they at least have the sheet or want you to provide them a sheet. I do not provide an MLS sheet for anybody but a high sheet. Everybody else just throws them away. Um, so yeah, you're, you're not wrong, Erica. You're going to go into a house. You're going you're gonna to trick people into thinking you're probably a high D because you know what you want. You already know the analytics behind the house, and now you just need to validate it. Some high C's will spend a, a bit of time in, in a couple of different rooms, but you're not likely to spend five to 10 minutes in every single room. You're likely to spend five to 10 minutes in the kitchen because that's important to you or the backyard because that's important to you. <clears throat> Questions on how this interacts with real estate, people in general and yourself? Sherry. Guess how many houses we looked at? One, impulsive. I love it. Let's buy it. And there's probably no remorse. You probably have some remorse. You're probably like, oh, I didn't even think about this when we looked at our house, but oh, well, we'll get over it. Nope, none. I actually, uh, that's one of the few things that I like jumped on that I really don't regret. But I'm the same way, like when it comes to cars, pisses my husband off so bad. Like <laughs> that's the one, I'm buying it. That's it. <laughs> See, what's funny is, is you're, you're, uh, Oh no, you're in, what are you, an I an IS or IC? I see. Slight I see. C. I was gonna say that that sounds very slight, but nonetheless, we're talking about extremes in this class. That would be me. All right. That's all I have for you guys. Any questions around the disk profile? No, I'm probably gonna need to watch this a few more times and kind of reflect on it, but uh, no, this is awesome. I bet you will, you high C. I, I caught myself as I said that, like, yep, I see it. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like a blessing and a curse, right? Like, I go around everybody, I judge them. I, I, people at the supermarket, grocery stores, Walmart. But what it, what it does, you guys, is it really starts to show you guys um, some empathy, right? When you get a grumbly worker at Walmart trying to check you out, instead of being like, oh, who's pissed in your Cheerios today? You'll start to you'll start to you'll start to understand you'll start to go uh huh. I wonder if they're typically in a bad mood. I wonder if something set them off today. I wonder if they're just a high D or type A personality and just don't like to talk. And then what you do is you kind of show them the empathy, and then your interactions are better. They're more sound. I went over my off like three times while looking at it. <laughs> Ariana, kill me, you crack me up. <clears throat> so do it. That's, I mean, that's the number one thing, you guys. Use this to your advantage. You guys all just spent two hours with me. Who the hell wants to spend two hours with me? So now go use it. Go take action around it. Go judge people. All right. There's a difference between judgment and judgmental. I really, I really think our society needs to understand that. It's our human behavior. It's instinctual to judge people, right? You can't, you can't walk past or see people and think, oh, they're ugly. Oh, they're cute. It's instinctual. It just happens, right? It's a judgment. But you don't have to be judgmental around it, right? Start judging people with an unbiased personality and start to pick out their personality. And I promise you, You'll start to hear things over the phone that you can turn yeses into no's, or I'm sorry, no's into yeses. Um, walk this, use this. Um, the more that you put your pressure on yourself to start to analyze your folks, your, your, your kids, people in your life, the easier it becomes when you start to do it with strangers, right? There's a reason why I sit on the phone with you guys when I first have a conversation with you for so long and ask you so many different random questions. 
Those random questions and how you answer them help me pick up on who you are. They help me pick up on that I, I probably shouldn't call Erica and Ariana out in scripts that they've never heard before. It's not going to go well with them. They're not going to appreciate it. They're not prepared. They didn't study it. They didn't look at it. They didn't practice it. For Sherry, she's going to get embarrassed. She's going to get nervous. She's going to laugh a little bit. But she also semi-thrives on it. You see, I've called Sherry out quite a few times, and the only thing she ever did was take her camera off. She knows that it, she knows that it helps her. Yeah, I know it doesn't go well with you, Sherry, because you do have an attribute of that high C in you. But mark my words, I do that too much to Erica and Ariana. They're not showing back up. So I'm judging all of you. I want to help all of you do this right. Now help yourselves and go through and take action and, and go through the day and, and look at who you interact with. Who are they? Can you pick up on it? Once you start to pick up on their dominating traits, then start to see if you can pick up on their secondary trait. That's harder. I, I still struggle with that. I don't think there's any right, right or wrong. Um, but also think about that circle. So if you can pick up on somebody and you can say, oh, <laughs> that person's a squirrel, they're a high eye, then most likely, and not always, because we got, we got Sherry in the room, Sherry and Bert, they're, they're just weird ducks, um, most likely, if you pick out that somebody's a high I, think to yourself, well, they're probably a high ID or a high IS. And then start to see if you can find characteristics around those. I promise you, if the more you do this, the more you'll be able to relate to people, the, the, the more effective your conversations will be. Right? With a high D, the person that's grumbly, like, is Brady still on here by chance? Brady, Brady's learned this. High um, um, FISBOs for sale by owners are typically high D's. They're very decisive. They made the decision to list on their own. A high S is never going to be a FISBO, right? So Brady's going to have to know that he's going to deal with a, high, a lot of high D's. Well, what do the high lot of D's like to do? They like to get to the point. They like to be told. A high D, you can mirror and match them and they won't be offended. If a high D ask you, what the hell are you calling me for? You can literally snap back at them. What would you say to that, Brady? What the hell are you calling me for? Looking to see when you're going to list your home with me. Bingo. And then they're going to be caught off guard because a high D isn't used to that. They said that to Brady because they're used to, they're used to people backing down from that. They want to be decisive. They want you to get to your point. Don't be like, well, my name is Brady. I'm actually calling because I'm a local real estate agent. And I'd like to see when you would like to list your home. You're done. You didn't make a relationship. You didn't feed into what that high D was. The high D said, what the hell are you calling me for? They don't care that you're a real estate agent. They don't care what your name is. They don't care what company you're with. They want to know why you're there. Well, I'm, I'm actually calling to list your home. How are you doing today? Um, pay attention to it. Any questions? I'm going to stop recording.